So the two leading theories having to do with philosophy of mind are dualism. That's the belief in both a physical material and a, a mental or non-material state. And then the materialist um, physicalism, they only believe in the physical material worldview. And so I'm sure you have come across a lot of that in your literature. And I think it's good to know their theories and their practices. But if you do believe there is a soul or a spirit, um, materialism is probably not the right theory for you, as you can well imagine. Professor, yeah. let me, let me um, get your feedback on this. Well, here's an experience, and I want you to give me your thoughts about it. I was uh, called to do an intervention. So I prepared, got myself ready to do the intervention, which was going to happen that week. Well, two days out, I visioned the intervention step by step. I saw the intervention take place before it took place. So when I get to the home of the family that I'm going to do the intervention, everything was set up exactly what I saw. Everything happened exactly what I saw. So I just walked out what I saw. What was that? What would you, how would you classify that? That uh, sounds very spiritual to me. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. But come from a materialistic or uh, from a phil philosophical perspective, uh, what happened consciously, subconsciously, spiritually? Oh, like how would a materialist explain that? Yes. Okay. They would simply say, what it probably, did this happen while you were sleeping? James, uh, your mic's back off. Yeah, yeah, that one happened, but I have several of them. One that happened when I was wide awake and I saw the whole thing happen in front of my eyes. And well, this would work for both cases, the explanation. Okay, okay. So, and this is how, um, I'm going to close this down so I can see you guys. I'll put it back up if anyone needs to see it again. Um, I think it relates kind of like intuitive knowledge. Like, you didn't get there because you researched or did other things. It just kind of like came to you, whether sleeping or awake. And I think what the behavior, the materialist would say is that, well, it's not like an angel whispered that in your ear or the heavens open and God gave you revelation. But subconsciously, you had probably picked up all these cues about the family and their dynamic and what would be the best way because of your schooling and classes and previous life experience, all of that in your subconscious kind of congealed like this vision of what needed to happen. And that's how I think they would explain it. Okay. It, it yeah. was all in you. You just hadn't been able to piece it together. Yeah. But I never saw these people until I saw them. Oh, then. And, and yet I, I saw them in I the don't vision. Know them. <laughs> right. And yet I saw them in the vision and they were exactly who I saw. I don't think there would be an explanation <laughs> for that. And so I've, I've experienced that multiple times. Well, keep that in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. They can't teach that in school. <laughs> All right. Was everyone able to copy down those? Um, Two websites. One's the short version and the other's the full article. Could you put them back up, please? Yes. I'm sorry I don't have them hyperlinked. I'll pay more attention next week. Um, so the first one it, is the full article, and I think it's between 15 and 17 pages. And um, the second one is just the one-page blog. blog. And it, like I said, it really does capture the essence of what I want to talk about. But some of you might be fascinated by this, so I gave you the both. But the the bottom one is enough for what I want to do in class, and it will tie into when we get into more existential themes and Gestalt therapy next week, and begin to look at 
because they are not necessarily materialist. Um, many of them, all, some of them are, but it's a spectrum. And many of them believe there is a non-material part of ourselves. And so I would like to talk about some of the history of philosophy, especially um, with Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, David Brower, who was a physician, medical physician in Vienna, but he's the one that started that talk therapy, which I believe Freud adopted and became like his um, psychoanalytic approach. But it had to do with having conversations with his clients or patients.